Yo, yo, hey guys, it's Small Mouth Crush. Today's tackle review video, we're going to be talking about the Rapala DT series crankbaits. It's one of my favorite crankbaits of all times because it's so effective and it puts a lot of fish in the boat for me year round. So we're going to break it down real quick in this video. That's all coming up. doubt I love throwing a Rapala, especially the DT series. I use everything from the DT4s all the way down up to the DT20s in the past. Specifically a lot of the bodies of water that I fish now is tidal water as well as some, some, some smallmouth waters. And for the most part I'm going to be using a lot of the DT4s, DT6s, and DT10s. Now there are certain situations where I found DT16s and DT20s work really well especially for me because I know a lot of you guys probably fish uh, if you're ledge fishing on the Tennessee River a DT20 certainly can put some fish in the boat but I found that a lot of the DT16s and DT20s for me help put a lot of smallmouth in the boat especially in the river type of system so the St. Clair River, Detroit River, St. Lawrence River uh, places like that and then it's also very effective if you have a large body of water say Oneida Lake, Lake Champlain where you get a lot of fish that suspend over flats that are chasing bait fish uh, DT16 and DT20 can really come into play and I think it's a great crankbait uh, for those choices but in today's video I kinda wanna just narrow it down to the DT4, 6's and 10's and in the specific colors that I like to use talk color again I want to keep things simple my favorite all-time color has to be the Helsinki right I mean the Helsinki shad I got them in a variety of different sizes and I got a lot of them so I, I go through a lot of baits one thing about Rapala's and, and the way I fish them I fish them around a lot of hard cover a lot of rocks and so I'm constantly losing baits like more than I want to admit so I do need a big stockpile of baits and Helsinki is going to be a color that I'll have a bunch of them on me at, at all times. Uh, I also fish a lot of DTs in the springtime, in the spring of the year, and a lot of times for some reason that red crawfish color or that spring craw really comes into play for me. So I'm going to be using a lot of different colors like a demon. Uh, we got the mule here. I do have some custom DTs that I had painted custom that kind of give me that orange red crayfish look. And I throw these a lot in early spring and then there is a time in certain bodies of water in the fall where I'll actually start throwing this bait a little bit more. Productive. You think in the fall it's more bait fish and I, don't get me wrong the Helsinki is still being used a lot to mimic bait fish in the fall but there's a there's a couple different instances and situations where that crayfish color is going to come in to play in the fall for me as well. During the summer months I'm really the way I fish I'm really going to be throwing that shad pattern and there's a lot of different I mean Rapala makes a lot of great colors I, I just again want to keep it simple and this is just a high confidence color that I have that I'll throw anywhere in the country and have found success success on that on that Helsinki but there's different variations of shad colors that Rapala Rapala makes as well where the frick is it I just had the DT4 and I thought I had it here I guess I don't have a DT4 in here Where's my DT4s? Hello? Okay, hot mustard, that'll work. So a DT4, I'll throw a lot around shallow rocks. You know, so DT4 stands for four feet deep is what this bait will run. Now you can get a smaller diameter line and you can, uh, you know, your retrieve will actually determine how deep this bait goes. So you can get it deeper. But for the most part, a DT4 is going to go down to, DT down to, four feet. DT6, a lot of areas that has some nice man-made structure underneath the water that's in shallow water. That's where this bait's going to come into play for me. That's where I'll throw that. When I get out of that four to six foot range, that's where I'm going to start throwing that DT6. And really, the DT6 for me is pretty much the bait of choice whenever I'm in six feet of water or less. Because a lot of times I want that bait to crash down below, hit the bottom, stir up the bottom, especially if it's around, you know, a hard bottom. That's when that DT6 is going to come into play. And then that DT10, man, I'll have that DT10 and I'm going to be throwing that a lot in that 7, 8, 9, 10 feet of water. That's when that DT10 is going to be working a lot for me. And that's for me, a lot of times in the tidal waters that I fish in the summer months, 
that's the zone a lot of my fish are going to be in. And so that's why you'll see me throw that DT-10 quite often in those types of situations. We can't forget about the fire tiger. Man, they, I mean, that's like, that's a standard of a fire tiger color as you can get. But it's extremely effective in that stained, dirty water. And oftentimes, in the middle of summer, we'll get some rains, we'll get some, some wind, and it'll stir up and dirty that water. And a lot of times, if you throw that... If you throw that fire tiger, you're going to get some more bites uh, over a shad-colored crankbait. It just seems to uh, allow that fish to see a little bit more because there isn't any sound system. You know, the DT is a, a very quiet bait. There's no rattles in it. It's just a balsa bait. So, I mean, it's kind of like a finesse sneak approach for me. Is what I feel when I'm when I'm when I'm throwing this bait. Is my job is to try to get this and, and hit the bottom and stir up the bottom as much as I can but come in like in a sneak attack way, if that makes sense. And that's why I probably have a lot more confidence than other types of crankbaits. Believe me, I own a bunch of them. Crash Course and the Rapala DTs. A couple other things I want to talk about real quick is oftentimes, especially in the later, in the warmer weather months, I'm going to be switching the hooks out. I'm going to be using a triple grip on these baits. Uh, I like to throw a red triple grip in the front and then just a normal uh, colored triple grip in the back. The short shank, KVD short shank triple grips, I found they're the best hooks uh, that help me keep these fish pinned. And I have a lot of videos discussing my theory on that and why I, I prefer a triple grip over a round bend, especially when that fish is inhaling that bait. Uh, you're not going to lose fish. That goes back to my walleye days. We used to troll for walleyes with crankbait. Sometimes you'd have a bait that's out 75, 100 yard, or 100 feet behind the boat. And you get that bite, so you got the momentum of the boat moving forward. You have the weight of the fish, and of course we're dealing with crankbaits. And I just found when these when triple grips first came out, if we started using triple grips, we would keep those walleyes pinned more often than not. And it just carried over for me in the bass world when you're casting crankbaits. It certainly gets you a better hookup ratio, in my opinion. Now I use a variety of different rods when I'm throwing DTs. Uh, for me, I use a lot of Dobbins, so a 704 is a great rod to use a DT4 or a DT6 with. I believe it's a 765. Your larger DT, like a DT20 or even a 16, that has a lot of torque. You know, when, you, when, you're, trying to, when you're trying to deep crank and you're throwing a, a larger DT20 or, or really any crankbait for that matter, you're going to want to go down a gear ratio. You're going to want to be in that 5 to 4 gear ratio range because it's going to be a lot more comfortable on your wrist when you're reeling in that much pressure on that bait that those bigger DT20s um, have, uh, it's going to be a, I mean, it's going to be night and day if you're casting, you know, if you're using something in the seven range or even an eight to one, casting those bigger DTs is going to be hard. But for, but for the most part, for these DT4s, DT6s, and DT10s, you can get away with a seven or an eight to one type of, of reel. Uh, I like to throw 12 pound fluorocarbon, so I use uh, 12 pound gamma. Most of the time when I'm cranking, uh, I used to use monofilament, but now that uh, excuse me, now that I'm using the uh, fiberglass rods, uh, it has so much give, and I rarely lose a fish. So I, I really do like the fluorocarbon line uh, when I'm throwing a, a DT6, DT4, DT6, or DT10. All right, guys, there you go. Crash course on Rapala DT series crankbaits, one of my favorite crankbaits that are out there. I hope you enjoyed the quick video. Let me know in the comments below what kind of success you've had on Rapalas in the past. Love to hear about it. Don't forget to like the video. Share it if you can, as always. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.